here we are. In spite of all the difficulties, here we are. And here we will ever be. And nothing will move us from here. Not like they're trying to do to the students at the university campuses. Columbia, was it, that they arrested 113 students? Where mm -hmm. do they think they're going? You know, this is not possible. They want to play around with the student movement like that. Well, then they're going to get a slap in the face, you know, just like the student general strikes over Vietnam after the uh, four Kent State students were killed. And there was, I think, six Atlanta State University students who were killed, but they're not mentioned because, because they're Black. Yep. So the Kent State students are known in history, and now we put back the Black students into history as well. And this is, you know, what is developing now in the United States of America. So here we go. What do we have to say about all of this? Uh, I think uh, the, Univer the University of Columbia did uh, a big service to the Palestinian cause and to the student body in the United States by insisting of suspending, uh, I think, about nine students for refusing to cooperate with investigation about anti-Semitism, who were some of them are Jews. <laughs> so the <laughs> students refused. <laughs> the, yeah, the students refused to collaborate or cooperate with the police on this. So uh, what happened? The student body uh, responded by uh, doing uh, sit in and uh, in camp uh, on uh, on the grounds of Columbia. So. Uh, of course, the system, the Congress, the White House, the mainstream media, they went onto uh, their tribe uh, of, of anti-Semitism, uh, harassing Jewish faculty, harassing Jewish students, you know, anti-Semitism. They, they made them sound like, uh, you know, uh, those students who were actually, lots of them were Jews <laughs> or are Jews, as a Gestapo. Um, so uh, the more the then what happened, the whole thing spread all across universities in in, in America, in in solidarity with Columbia. So what do we have? We started with nine students. Instead of let them go, they insisted to go after them. Now it's the whole country is uh, up uh, against the system and against the Zionist state. So thank you very much. Uh, the administration uh, of uh, Columbia University for your stupidity. <laughs> That's so appropriate because Columbia is supposed to be an elite university, you know, so principled, academic, da da da. -da. You know, it's nothing of the sort. It's uh, just the uh, political machine there that they have going. Uh, and I yeah. found the same to be true, you know, like in Canada, like no Canadian English university would let me uh, do write m my doctoral thesis, even though I went through all the qualifications, they wouldn't accept. And uh, why? Because they're all, you know, all the political science departments are led by liberal party members who are pro-Zionist because the liberal party is supporting the state of Israel, you know, without without uh, much limit, you know, unless uh, they're being forced, you know, by minority government status and the Social Democratic Party, the NDP, to vote in favor of uh, ceasefire or, and uh, and then to the uh, war materials being sent. But the war materials weren't stopped because they had already approved, you know, certain, you know, um, certain permits and they weren't going to reverse it. But now, you know, the war materials are supposed to be stopped by the liberal government. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. Mm -hmm. oh. but, uh, I, I, it's a very important, yeah. a very important situation here. Um, you have across the country um, and around the world, actually, um, people are standing up and showing solidarity with the Palestinian resistance movement and their rights, their human rights and the demand for um, eventually a two-state solution, some solution to the issue of Palestinian oppression. Oh, this okay. movement is being, um, is being demonized and uh, um, 
verbally assaulted in the media, calling him anti-Semitic. Um, yet the students continue to um, have, their, have their encampments, have their occupations. Um, and I think that the, my, my question is, in what direction should that movement go now and how can people intervene and show solidarity and um, safeguard the movement so it, it, it stays in the service of the other Palestinian people? Hmm. Um, you know, the, the issue of, of anti-Semitism, um, I look forward to, a, an, if, if we ever can have an honest debate on this, because there are anti-Semites. They're not in this movement. No, no they're not. Remember, fact, most, most of the students, many of the students are Jewish. But for those that are not Jewish, an anti-Semite comes out with anti-Jewish statements. That's not what's happening here. Hmm. You know, I can point to anti-Semites um, in different parts of the United States very easily. And they're not in, in, in this movement for support of Palestinians. This movement is this movement is about a social equality, justice, self determination, and human rights. And I and um, you know, the political machine in the United States has its international its international uh, agenda, and Israel is part of that of that international agenda. So anybody who attacks Israel from the issue of politics and human rights against the Palestinians. Is, is going to be defamed by the press and now by the Congress. And, and, and remember, too, um, everybody, that about three or four months ago, Nancy Pelosi, who was then the Speaker of the House, said and anybody who was supporting, um, calling for uh, ceasefire, was Putin's puppets. And that the FBI should should support, should, should uh, in, investigate them. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. This. This is a statement she made many four months there. ago, and I'm sure the FBI took up either had already started their investigation of the other student movement, or took that as as an invitation. So you know this 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 the, the these these violent attacks to me are the culmination of statements by Pelosi um, and movements by the government. To, to criminalize uh, students and Americans who are in, 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 who are in opposition to the U.S. position and policy towards the Palestinians. Mm. The student revolt, I hear, has also spread to uh, Paris in the famous you know, political science uh, department there and Australia. Yeah. Yeah. I guess Canada is too cold for the time being. <laughs> <laughs> Although, oh, Ahmed, you're too far away from the microphone. Please oh, come sorry. closer. <laughs> sorry. Um, uh, uh, I think that what they've been doing, the, the Zionists and their apologists, their, their supporters in, in the United States, are working, they have been working behind the scene for the past 10, 15 years on equating anti Semitism to anti Zionism. Right. So, this right. is where they come from. They come from this issue. Like you being against Israel, you are being anti-Semitic, which is, of course, it's far-fetched. It doesn't stand up to the test. But still, this is where they come from. The system comes from that uh, point of view. If you are against Israel, and whatever Israel does, it's anti-Semitism. It's as simple as that. So if Israel tells 30,000, 35,000 Palestinians, and you said, oh, oh, you can't do that, you were anti-Semite. So uh, Semitism means is is killing more Palestinians is is okay. Being yeah, against yeah. criminal Israel, then you become an anti-Semite. That's yeah, yeah. disgusting. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Killing more anti killing more Semites is anti-Semitic. Yeah, sure. Okay. But I mean, opposed to killing more anti-Semites, uh, no. more Semites. Sorry. So basically, so basically what? What the pro-Israeli or the, the U.S. imperialism is saying through its through its Congress Congress members, senators, the government of officials, and the media is those who oppose the genocide and the Holocaust in in Palestine have to be anti-Semitic. They can't stand up for the lives of the Palestinians. The lives of the Palestinians don't matter. No, absolutely. 
they they don't matter because if you support if you say they have they have human rights, even if you say Palestinian lives matter, let's say they're a very general statement like that, like Black Lives Matter. Oh no, that is anti-Semitic. No, it isn't. It is not anti-Semitic. You're supporting the rights of Palestinians to have their human rights defended. That's it. There's nothing anti-Semitic anti about it, but they're saying it is. Mm -hmm. So um, BDS was was condemned as being anti-Semitic, and, and I appreciate I, I appreciate you making those that you, I appreciate your reminding us of this history of trying to equate of opposition to the policies and practices of the Zionist state to being anti-Semitic, and and it, it got it's got so bad in Germany. I'm sure we all we all heard about what happened in Germany. The Palestinian Congress couldn't even start. They couldn't even have, have the Congress. That's right, yeah. That's right. I mean, you see, like this is a, there's yeah. underlying there's underlying statement with it from this uh, campaign, organized campaign by the Zionists, that the Palestinians they don't matter because they are brown people. So brown right. people don't matter. So right. they are uh, expendable. Right. Only only white uh, uh, Semites are. Who are uh, worthy to be human and to defend? While as the Palestinians, they're expendable. They're, they're terrorists. They're uh, they're inherently terrorist. Uh, they're inherently violent. They're inherently in their culture uh, child killers. So this is this is this racism perpetuated by the the system in the United States. It's it's very vile and disgusting and slippery slope, which uh, actually. Uh, more and more consolidating the stand of the students in in the university campuses that it's it's way too way outlandish to for the students to not to stand against right exactly and that and that's why it's so important that's why this this movement is so important because it's actually a mass movement in opposition to that movement you were just talking about exactly hmm. yes I think that where the definition of anti-Semitism that is being used comes from is from Protestant Christianity. Because there it is stated, and they pull out, you know, like a couple of strands, you know, of Judaism and claim that this is, you know, God's will and that uh, the land, uh, the land, the holy land, as they call it, is uh, belongs to the Jewish people. And then you know, the designers are quite happy, you know, to go along with this, even though they never invented it in the first place. It was invented in 1835 by the Christian Protestant movement as a scheme, and it was uh, previously, you know, uh, initiated uh, by uh, Cromwell, who wanted to send the uh, converted uh, British Jewish population to Anglicanism into uh, Palestine to colonize it for the British Empire, which they refused. It was a second chance was with Napoleon who wanted to send the uh, Moroccan Jewish population to Palestine, colonize it for France. And uh, they refused as well. And uh, so that's where it comes from. So their idea is that, you know, this is where the Jews belong. Therefore, the Jews have a right to self-determination there and nowhere else. Okay, now that's the key in Protestantism. Nowhere else. Anywhere else, you know, Jews have to assimilate and just become a citizen and pretend that they're Christians. You know, they have to dress like Christians, you know, with short hair. Can't wear a kippah outside. Like in France, you know, you're not allowed to wear a kippah or, uh, or uh, kafia. Uh, no, not a kafia. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm very <laughs> slow because of the morphine that I'm on because of the uh, convalescence <laughs> yeah, from my knee replacement. So, you know, what they're talking about is not anti-Semitism. What they're talking about is anti-Protestantism <laughs> and their white supremacist agenda. Of course. Of course. It, is, it is the white supremacist agenda. This is what it is. It's racism. Yes. 100% racism. It's, it's white versus non-white. It's not against blacks. It's not against browns. Anybody who is not white uh, doesn't adhere to the white culture. He is expendable. Or they are expendable. They are not humans or subhumans. Or it's just collateral damage. So I wouldn't say just only it's it's uh, it's protest Protestantism. Okay, Christian Protestantism. It's uh, actually it's a mixture of uh, capitalism, 
capitalism, uh, white capitalism, whereas Zionism is an offshoot of this white Western capitalism. Uh, I would not just only put it put the onus only on on, on the white Protestant uh, capitalist uh, imperialist. Also, we have to look at the roots of the the Zionist movement itself, who. Yes. Uh, who actually they were actually created uh, their uh, mindset or or uh, ideology of of uh, a land uh, for people with uh, a land without people for people without a land basically when you negate the existence of entire people in palestine anybody else in palestine is not worthy to be dealt as a rightful owner he is or she is or there are our uh, colon colonists coming from the outside. And this is a story behind Zionist uh, propaganda that all the Palestinians, they are nothing but Arabs. They came because of the Jews came back to Palestine and they made uh, this uh, area so advanced agriculture and, and industrial. So those Arabs came from all surrounding areas and they lived in, in the land of Israel. And when the creation of Israel came in 1948, those Arabs refused to leave, then some of them left, some of them stayed, but Israel is a land of the Jews. Anybody fighting that is anti-Semitic. Yeah. yeah. Yes, thank you. That, that's really a nice way of summarizing it. Yeah. 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 And, Zionists, uh, I think the word is inconsequential. The Palestinians are treated by the Zionists as if they were inconsequential, not important. Right. Not important. Yeah. I mean, and if, if you think about the, the, the barbaric practices we see. Let's just start with home demolition. Yeah. Where else in the world, and I, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm trying to think, where else in the world where you have national oppression are the homes demolished? Maybe in a war like Vietnam, a Bush war, where, you know, you, you basically clear a, a village and burn it down, that, that, so that we have something like that. But home, home demolition, I mean, how much money has Caterpillar made on its special tractors to destroy homes? Richard McCoy was murdered like that. As an example, home home demolition. And I, I would even argue, or like to, I would love to research this, wherever you have a colonization movement, some kind of ideology like this must justify it. Because any kind of, any kind of um, uh, occupation or uh, immigration movement to a land which you which you weren't born in, or someone says you have a right to, has to demonize the people who are who are already there. So you're saying I have a right to be here, and sorry, guy, you, you don't get out, or, or yeah. you don't out. I just kill you. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, one thing that uh, yeah, but okay. One thing that bothers me greatly is that they keep on referring to these demonstrations as uh, as often as they can, you know, as being anti-Semitic. And, and yet... Hamas you know, Arch supporters. They call them Hamas supporters. Hamas supporters. Uh, <laughs> of course, they have well, to demonize. Actually, one, one, uh, one of uh, one NBC uh, anchor or, uh, you know, journalist, he, she said, look at the faces on campus and the flags they carry. It's exactly the same people demonstrating against Israel in Tehran. So basically, mm. they're becoming Iranian. All of a sudden, all these students, American students, white, black, uh, Jewish, uh, Arab origin, they all become all of a sudden demonized and uh, charged as Iranians. Uh, very soon, they will be becoming uh, Hezbollah. All of them become Hezbollah. Or, oh, pro-Iranian. Yeah, we're pro-Hezbollah, pro-Iranian, and pro-Hamas all at the same time. We are pro Houthis. We're all pro Houthis too. Oh right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Definitely. So, yeah. you, you know, the, the, you know how they have been demonizing Iran and the Iranian people, okay, for over at least forty-five years. So basically, when you go on on those students on campus, as they look like Iranian demonstrators against Israel, basically you just, you know, negate an entire like just in a in a in a a paintbrush. You press them with being terrorists. That's it. They're 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 expendable. Therefore, when the 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 Gestapo police 
moved into the students and robbed them like terrorists, okay? And they're justified because they're attacking uh, Hezbollah and Iranian uh, agents in, in campus. That's disgusting. Mm -hmm. That's really all. <laughs> there's two things I think that can help here. One, even though, you know, there's a large body of uh, Jewish Voice for Peace, you know, at these demonstrations, or if not now, they're not given any prominence, you know, they're, and even then, you know, like the media, you know, interviews them and doesn't care to mention that they're Jewish, you know, like, or try to minimize it, you know, I think this should be given a certain prominence, first of all. Secondly, who would the, give uh, them the prominence? Who should give them the prominence? The media, you know, the when they speak to them. The media, no. main, mainstream media is your enemy. It's the enemy of the yes. freedom rights. They will not give them power. Problems. No, but when but they have to come to you know to interview students anyway. They have to come and cover the events. So those students who are covering the event, uh, when they're Jewish, they should state so, and they should you know the, not you know speak as an American, but they should be speaking as an American student. They should be speaking as a Jewish student in America. They and do. Maybe should they do. You, okay, they do. and also they should be using the term the Jewish people. I hate the term Jew. First of all, it comes, you know, from Nazi Germany, you know, from the yellow star, which said Jew on a yellow star. Yid means Jew. And it's been transposed into American English and is used in America as if it's equivalent to Jewish. It's not. The word Jew, the term Jew, even used by Jewish people, is an insult. And yet they use it, you know, as a way to uh, minimalize, you know, it's a shorter word, you know, like it's something that, you know, like, is can be put off to the side, you know, it has a very negative connotation to it. So that's uh, another thing that I want to mention. And uh, the I have a complaint against the Jewish Voice for Peace people, and the if not now. I mean, you know, like here they are picking up, you know, like strands uh, of uh, revolutionary uh, ideas, you know, from where does it come from? It comes from the Jewish Bund originally. And they don't even know it. Like the term, not in our name. That's on a, on the poster that I have right up there that I used in 2006. And it comes from the Jewish Bund because it means that the Zionists cannot speak in the name of the Jewish people. And the Jewish Bund stands up for the Jewish people, the interests of the Jewish people, the self-determination of the Jewish people, as opposed to the Zionists who claim only to be speaking in the name of the Jewish people and have taken over the civil society of Jewish people nearly everywhere because the support from the Jewish national bourgeoisie. This is a project of the Jewish national bourgeoisie, even if they're not Israeli. So this has to, has to come out. And, and, uh, and, and, and the, uh, and the young students there, you know, they have not, you know, th those, you know, like uh, Simon Zimmerman, of uh, a founder of the Jewish Voice for Peace and uh, featured in the film Israelism. She knows nothing about the Jewish Bund. You know, she just talks as if she invented all of this stuff. And that is a deficiency because it means that the Zionists can claim to be the historic movement that is seeking to achieve the self-determination of the Jewish people. And who's going to contest that claim? Because they are in a position of leadership now. They control everything, like a dictatorship, even though a majority of the Jewish people don't even live in, in Palestine. So that has to get out somehow. I'm, I'm well, very think, frustrated think, with that. I think it's, it's always, uh, well, all these Jewish voices for peace, young people, of course, they don't know the historical background, what's going on. In the past uh, 100, 150 years, they just woke up. Most of them, they came from Zionism. Like, you have to give them that. You got to give them that benefit that but, but, these people, they, they really did a, a big turn about, about 180 degrees from being pro Israel, Zionist, fascist, uh, racist, uh, capitalist, into understanding that Zionism, all of a sudden, it's, 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 uh, it's nothing like less than uh, Nazi Germany, okay? Right. So it's just people are waking up. So uh, I would not uh, go harsh on them at this moment. 
I'll give them the time uh, to, to understand. Uh, now they know what's going on. Now they have to start to dig history, dig the history up, what's going on within the Jewish uh, people in Europe and what happened and what took place. Then I'm sure they will come to the point of understanding there was a big fight between the Jewish Bund and the Zionist movement uh, in, in, in the 20s and 30s and 40s. Uh, where eventually the 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 bund were uh, uh, being murdered, uh, cleaned, cleansed by the Zionists in collaboration with the Nazis uh, from one side, also from the the Soviet uh, communists who also finish off the bund. So I will not go harsh on them at this point. I will just. Uh, hope that it will come to that point of understanding uh, the, the true history of, uh, you know, um, uh, antigism against Zionism and who were and uh, therefore. Mm. Yeah, I saw the interview with Simone Zimmerman yesterday and she came out of Zionism. She was being trained to be a Zionist leader. <laughs> and then she realized, you know, that there was credibility to what the Palestinians were saying. And then she discovered, you know, that the Nakba had actually taken place, etc. And then it all flowed from that. And she became anti-Zionist as a result, you know, on her own. And then she sort of, you know, know, chuckles, uh, 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 you know, to, to the Zionist establishment that had been training her. And yet she turns out to be anti-Zionist nonetheless. You know? So that was very interesting. It is. But, it is the whole the whole the whole uh, genocide of Gaza really hit the, the the Jewish people in the head. Many yeah. of them woke up. What's going on? What's happening? Like, why are we killing so many children, women, and destroying? Yes. The entire... It's it's it, there's no justification whatsoever. Any sane person, any sane person, mm. okay, is not psychopath. Okay, mm. what we'll conclude that what's going on? It's it has it has roots within uh, fascism. And and uh, racism and uh, and anti humanity humanity by the Zionists. He, he, he cannot you cannot be human and accept or justify what's going on in Gaza. So yeah. the, the Zionists right. did big big service to the anti Zionist movement within the Jewish people to uh, stand against them. It's not just within the world and the Palestinian and the Arabs. No, actually, within the Jewish people, there's lots of big, big awakening happening, whether uh, it's becoming uh, 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 show, voicing their opponent, opposition to the Zionists, or at home, they just say, not in my name, I don't want this. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's ramification going to be uh, long, uh, Far and long, and we'll see that's happening very soon. That lots of support within the Jewish people against Zionism is growing. Mm. There's a yes. Please, Steve, go ahead. I want. I want to say to I'm, I'm is mentioning something that's excellent. It's good to see that because whenever you're going to have a social change in a country or internationally. People are going to have to change the way they saw it before. Wow, I was wrong. Wow, I wasn't aware of that. Hmm. And it guides their moral compass to a, a better position. So I appreciate hmm. your sharing that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, we have to uh, we have to educate the uh, pseudo Zionists of uh, the diaspora, the Jewish diaspora, which is what I was doing at the vigil, because objectively they're not Zionists, you know, because they're not living in in in, in the colonial project. So they are non-Zionists by definition, by the definition of Zionism itself, which requires that that Jewish people go and live in Palestine. Okay. The second point is that a lot of the uh, the Jewish uh, anti-Zionists now they refer to themselves as being leftists. That's not good enough. You know, the Communist Party was pro-Zionist until 1967, and they should know that. Probably a lot of them come from Communist Party families. And now they've realized, you know, that they, they had to abandon the Communist Party uh, doctrine in order to become anti-Zionist. Okay, and uh, because, uh, or the Communist Party has pretended, you know, to become anti-Zionist. 
And so they, they, they identify themselves as leftists. That's not good enough. They have to look to the Jewish Bund and they have to recognize and 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 acknowledge that the Jewish Bund is the vanguard of the Jewish people in, in the struggle against Zionism, together with Natura Karta from the Judaic perspective, being anti-Zionist leadership of the Jewish people against Zionism, against the Zionists. But there's something that can help. What's that? And that is, you know, like these protests are going to attract anti-Semites, like real anti-Semites, you know, because they take oh. advantage, you know, of an anti-Zionist critique. I've heard some libertarians mouthing off saying, oh, look, you know, the Zionists have been lying about the Nakba along, you know, and they're the ones, you know, responsible for the expulsion of what is now 5.7 million Palestinian refugees under UNRWA, you know, like, and they sound very sympathetic to the Palestinians and they sound anti-Zionist. And then they continue and say, oh, you know, this is the Jews, you know, who yes. are lying about the Holocaust as well. Right. Okay. And they just jump, you know, from Zionist to the Jews all of a sudden, just like that. Right. right. Those people have to be put put into, yeah, the, I, I into place. Definitely, definitely uh, I follow I follow I follow the demonstrations closely, whether in, in Canada or United States and elsewhere. And the organizers are very aware of this uh, issue yeah. of yeah. Uh, the the lunatic anti anti Jewish people or yeah. anti so much the true uh, racists true are not allowed. To give to be part be part of it, and definitely not given the platform to spew their uh, racist diatribe uh, uh, against yeah. uh, Jewish people, it's unacceptable, totally unacceptable. Uh, and uh, many, uh, most people they know. But well, like for example, there is uh, there's a on Twitter or the X, they showed a picture of somebody who's wearing a Palestinian kafia. And holding an, a, 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 a true anti-Semitic, uh, you know, uh, slogan, and they were saying, "Look, do you know this person? Do you know who is she? We need to know because this is unacceptable." Like so, they're actually they're policing their own demonstrations, not allowing those anti anti-Semitic and also a Zionist Zionist infiltrators into these demonstrations in order to look mm. make them look like. They're anti-Semitic and not anti-Zionist. This is mm. very important. So it's coming mm. from the Zionist movement and mm. coming from those uh, morons, I'll call them morons, who are anti-Semitic. So, mm. But uh, I'm sure that the young men and women in those demonstrations are aware and uh, they're guarding their demonstration from these lunatics, especially the Zionists. Actually, they're worse than those anti-Semitic, uh, white anti-Semitics. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Very true, Ahmad. You know, for years now, when I was going to the, the uh, Palestinian demonstrations, and they were to turn up, you know, like some English, usually English uh, Anglophone person coming, you know, with some sort of, kind of, you know, like homemade, you know, anti-Semitic sign, you know, presenting themselves, trying to sort of, you know, ingratiate themselves with the Palestinians. Yes. And since, you know, the leadership of the Palestinian movement has long time, you know, acknowledged, you know, that this is not, you know, acceptable. And, you know, and, and they have confidence in me, 